Well, they said, I think the, the authorities said that uh, it wasn't an actual grenade. And so th that's what it is. It was a, a fake. It was a faking out, really, more than anything else. But it had the same effect. Because once you put, because terrorism is about putting the fear in people's minds that uh, they are in imminent uh, danger. danger of their lives or whatever. You know, it's just that fear that they put in their minds that uh, we're going to explode this plane, everybody's going to die. And of course, the guy's complying. So an act has been committed, whether it was with a toy gun, whether with a toy knife, whatever, whether a toy grenade. But now, having said that, uh, the fact that they didn't kill anyone on board the flight, in fact, that they surrendered peacefully yeah, no to the authorities, I mean, those all way. So I think it, they, those all way in into, you know, kind of figuring out how much of a crime was the severity and what kind of punishment they should get. But I think, by and large, uh, they wanted to make a statement. They just wanted to say that Gaddafism is still alive, that Gaddafism <laughs> is not dead, even though they didn't have the real thing to go on there and actually commit acts of violence if they wanted to. So I think uh, it was just a political statement. And of course, terrorism is about making political statements too. It's really not necessarily about all this violence that we now see that has characterized the ISIS uh, ideology of terrorism. Uh, but the fact that they couldn't take real weapons on board on the board. plane, you think that's... Uh, that's that also be... a plus for yeah. security because yeah. it means security was tight enough. Okay. If they could have taken real weapons on board, they would have. I, I can assure you, it wasn't, it wasn't a joke. But when they assessed their chances, they saw that toys might get through without being detected, and uh, they took the, that chance and went on board. So what does that say about global security and the fight against terror? Well, it, it, it says that we, we, we're in trouble. Uh, we're really in trouble. I wish all the problems, uh, all the incidents, and all the cases of global security or insecurity we see will be of this nature where uh, they are pranksters. I wish they would be of that nature. Then real people won't die. But no, uh, we have real bad guys bringing in bad weapons into uh, places and mm -hmm. uh, killing people. Uh, look at that attack in uh, uh, Berlin market. It had been done. It, carried, it was carried out in a, at, on the Bastille Day at Nice. Yes. You know, and where they killed even many more people, three times more people. Uh, they have done it several times in, uh, in Israel uh, where they will hijack a, a, a bus and start applying to a population, and uh, eventually they get killed. So uh, it, it had been run over, that play had been run over and over again. Uh, not by ISIS, but th this one by ISIS this time, along with the one in Nice. So I think uh, the, the, what, what is there is we ought to consistently study the kinds of methods mm. terrorists are using to attack, such that this will be transmitted to intelligence and police agencies around the world, such that they can use that to harden their uh, jurisdictions against terrorist attacks. I know we've talked about this before, um, about you know, the increase in these attacks, especially during festive seasons. Uh, but should these countries that have been attacked before, should they be on high security alerts? Should they raise you know, their, 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 their security alerts because of uh, possible attacks during these festive seasons? I think that stands to reason. That's, mm -hmm. that's just logical because um, uh, we, if, again, following the same pattern, doing a trend analysis, we know that uh, those attacks occur incidental to festive seasons, the less of population in place, uh, people are not so uh, conscious. security conscious, mm -hmm. a loss of traveling members of the public, loss of shoppers, mm -hmm. you know, and so it, it just is a, it's a mouth-watering target for the bad guys because their goal is to kill as many people as they can. So uh, if that's their goal, and our goal is to save as many lives or save all lives if possible. Mm -hmm. And so we have to kind of compete again. It goes back to this thing about order and freedom. Which one should we emphasize at a given point in time? I want us to quickly talk about uh, Boko Haram. Uh, yes. President Mohamed Buhari said that the last enclave uh, in the, the Sampisa forest has been cleared by the Nigerian military. He commended them saying, you know, this was, you know, very timely and so on. But then there is a warning there that many of these insurgents have run into states like Adamawa, Yobe, neighboring states. People should be cautious. How can anyone possibly identify a possible insurgent? Well, um, I think uh, I would like to extend the um, caution that was uh, given by the military to uh, say that they should use what we call displacement theory of crime. When criminals are displaced from one point, they go to other points, and uh, they splash even further afield. After all, Yobe Adamawa states are active Boko Haram 
theater states right now. They are part of what we call the Northeast. Mm. So they, they are not splashing too far from there. So I'm looking further afield. I'm looking at Lagos, Enugu, Anambra, Abia, because that's where they can go further afield and create more havoc mm. if they have the material. We hope they are being denied the material. That is the, uh, the munitions of war mm. uh, to be able to carry out these attacks in those places. But in places like Bauchi, Boko Haram has a very good uh, operation down in Bauchi. In fact, Boko Haram is started in Bauchi State with the Dusintashi attack of 26th July 2009 on, uh, on the police station in Dusintashi. So, uh, I mean, Boko Haram is in Keno. They've been attacking and killing in Keno for many years. So, uh, so I think, uh, first of all, it's good news that mm -hmm. uh, we have defeated them in their enclave. Mm -hmm. That's uh, Sambiza Fora. But we know that they have since they've uh, relocated, they've yeah. changed their addresses, just that they didn't give us their moving address <laughs> where they moved to. They've relocated from that place. Yeah. We know that they've relocated to the border, to Niger, yeah. uh, to Chad. We know uh, Niger, uh, uh, to Cameroon. Cameroon. You know, they've relocated to, those, uh, to their emirs mm. in those places. And they are launching their attacks from there. So that's why we can't find those girls. Uh, because the girls are not there. They weren't in, they've not been in Sambisa for a long time. You know, they were first quartered there. And then they were relocated. So it's not, they weren't sitting there for us to come and pluck, you know, as it were. So I think uh, we have to be a little bit cerebral about it. And there are pro computer programs that can predict these kinds of... Uh, you know, uh, uh, movements. So I, the good news is, thank God that uh, we have defeated them in their headquarters. Mm -hmm. At least let's take over their headquarters and then maybe we should seize documents rather than burn it down or destroy it like we are normally, we normally do. We should seize uh, documents. There's a lot of stuff of forensic value yeah. there that we can seize and that will tell us a little bit more uh, about these guys and about how to detect them and in fact how they are set up and all that. And then we should have forensic scientists go in and process those, because they are crime scenes, process those crime scenes. We might even find clues as to the location of the girls in there, but we shouldn't be in a hurry like we normally do to destroy everything. So let's get that headquarters, secure it, process it as a crime scene, and then use that evidence to pursue the bad guys. Dr. Akoma, it's been a pleasure speaking with you on Diplomatic Channel. We hope to have you back here sometime in the new year. Thank you, ma'am. The UN Security Council adopts a resolution demanding an end to Israeli settlements. Do stay with us.